So today I'm going to be talking about making phylogenetic trees in Python. I'm going to run through a brief tutorial of how to do this. But first, we just need to identify what is a phylogenetic tree. Um, for anyone who's doing this for the first time, a phylogenetic tree starts with sequence data. So here I have an example of a few different species of turtles um, and a short section of their um, genetic code. Um, all these letters are the um, individual base pairs that code for their full DNA sequence. And so what we can do is take this information, um, line each of these different species up based on the information, and then create genetic um, based trees called phylogenetic tree, which you see here on the right. Um, and these trees are very useful for scientists and biologists. Um, they show the relationship between different species, or in this case, different um, phyla or kingdoms even of organisms. Um, and there's a lot of different analyses you can do on this tree and different um, visual representations you can use them for. Um, but for today, we're going to use a very basic tree format and just go from the sequence data to the tree itself. Um, this project has a GitHub web page with all of the data, um, Jupyter Notebooks and Python scripts available, open access. Um, you are already viewing this YouTube video, so you already know about it. And then I have three examples in my tutorial um, using turtles, corals, and sharks, um, and using a few different um, resources for you. So to start off, I just wanna run through all of the different resources I'm going to use and sort of the overall steps of creating these phylogenetic trees. Um, in the purple section up top, you can see step one is downloading and working with sequence data. Um, this uses that data with the base pairs. Um, it can be very, very large data, but that's that first purple section and the first step of the process. The second step is in the blue here, we have creating and working with alignment files. So once we have the sequence data from the first part, we have to line them all up so that we know that they um, are corresponding to the correct um, base pairs in each species. Um, and then from the alignment files, we can then move on to the third pink section, um, which is creating the tree itself and then actually creating the figure, the visual part of what we want for a phylogenetic tree. So for this analysis, um, I use the package in Python called BioPython. Um, it has three very good modules. There's more that it has, and I encourage you to explore it deeper, but the three I'm using today are Seek.io, Align.io, and Philo. And you might notice that all three of these correspond to a different step of the process, and all three of them have the same four base commands. Um, these four commands are read, parse, write, and convert. In every case, read will read a single file, meaning um, a single sequence, a single alignment, or a single um, tree, depending on which step you're in. Um, whereas parse will actually read multiple sequences, alignments, or trees within a single file um, and interpret them. Then we have the write function, which sort of goes in the opposite direction. It will take whatever data you're working with in your program and write a new file. And then finally, we have convert, um, which converts between different formats of files. So for sequence, alignment, and tree data, there's a many, many different formats that each of those can take. So convert is a very, very useful tool. The last part of BioPython that I'm going to use is the tree construction module. Um, and this has two facets, the distance tree constructor and the distance calculator um, that I will use in this analysis. And then I also have a few external resources that I needed to use to finish the entire project. Um, GenPink and Blast are websites that you can use um, to interact with sequence data. They are very similar, but actually sort of the op opposite of each other in that GenBank is a place where you can search a species name um, and it will output all of the different genetic sequences um, that are associated with the species. And then BLAST is somewhere where you can input a genetic code, a sequence, and it'll tell you um, all of the species that have that sequence or a very similar sequence. 
Um, in the alignment file section of this, I will use a website called Muscle, um, which basically just writes alignments. It's a very useful tool. And then finally, in the creating figures section of this tutorial, I use matplotlib, which is already loaded into Python or Jupyter Notebook. Um, but it's just a way to actually graph the phylogenetic tree. So to start off, I will show you my overall tutorial. Um, I encourage you to go through and read this because I'm not going to go through all of it right now. Um, but I'm going to talk a few, about a few points, starting with the different packages that Python has available and why I chose BioPython. So there are four main um, packages available in Python. We have BioPython, TrueSwift, DendroPy, and ETE Toolkit. And they all have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, but the main point is that BioPython is the only one of these that's able to work with sequence data and alignment files, whereas TreeSwift, DendroPy, and ETE Toolkit are all really focused on once you actually have the tree file constructed, then you can use these to either run um, analyses or statistics with TreeSwift and DendroPy or to make really uh, pretty graphs. They, in the ETE Toolkit, they have really good visualization um, modules. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I want to start with sequence data and end with a tree. And BioPython is really the best and possibly the only way to do that in Python. Um, so then we can move on to talking again about these steps that you use to create the tree. Again, you start with sequence data, then you convert that to an alignment, and then you convert that into a tree. And then you can finally make the actual tree figure in the end. And you can see the same diagram that I had before. And then this just moves into each of those four steps, which I am going to show you an example of, but I just want to highlight a few points here. Um, I go over how to um, download sequence data from GenBank and the different um, formats that you can access on there. Um, I also uh, provided some resources for downloading pre-made trees. If you want to skip the sequence part, there are other places where you can download um, files of just the tree data. Um, and then we move into actually working with BioPython. And so again, we start with the SeqIO module and we talk about the read, parse, um, write, and commit, uh, convert functions. Um, there are also a lot of really cool other functions in specifically SeqIO that I wanted to highlight. Um, these are not things I actually used um, in my analysis here, but SeqIO is able to write a new sequence by hand. Um, it's able to transcribe and translate DNA into RNA or into a protein sequence. Um, and then you can also interact with these um, sequences just like a string normally would be interacted with on Python. Um, so you can combine them and you can um, change them into a mutable object and edit them directly. And then I'm not going to go into detail here because I'm going to show you all of these steps, but I have the alignment process, the phylogenetic data anal um, creation process, and then the actual figure um, process highlighted in this tutorial. And I've also got some really helpful resources um, at the bottom here for you to use. So now I'm going to move into one of my examples. As I mentioned, there are three. Um, the first is Turtles, um, and it's based in a Jupyter notebook, um, which I think is the easiest way to start to work with and understand this data. So I'm going to start by importing the BioPython package and then import the three main modules that we use here, the SeqIO, AlignIO, and Philo. The next thing I'm going to do is read all of my sequence data. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit what this looks like later, but I have downloaded each of these species individually, um, and then I have to upload them each individually using the read function. And then I did sort of an arbitrary step. This is not required, but there is an easy way to um, rename all of the IDs. And here I've chosen to do the common name of each of these turtle species so that it's easier for you to engage with this and understand um, the tree when it's finally made. So just make sure I'm running everything. 
The next step is to then take those seven species and write them into one file. So it's very easy to just combine each of the individual files into one new file. The next thing I have to do is to run the alignment. Um, I'm going to use Muscle for this, and there actually is a way to use Muscle in um, Python itself, but I actually find it simpler and easier when you only have one file or maybe a few files to just go and manually, manually enter things into Muscle. So what I've got here um, is the basic page for Muscle set up. I've already loaded in my file and I'm just going to run this job. It might take a moment to run. The larger your file, obviously, the longer it will take, but that was pretty quick. Um, so here it outputs the alignment. So now all of these base pairs are lined up. There actually is a small issue with this line. Obviously, it's sort of indented the wrong way, um, but not, not something that's difficult to just manually go in and change quickly. Um, so now I have my alignment file and I saved it and I uploaded it to Jupyter Notebook. And now I can input that alignment file um, into the notebook and start working with it. So now I'm getting into more of the nitty gritty of actually making these trees. So I'm going to input the, um, or sorry, load the module, the tree construction module. And from there, I'm going to load the distance calculator and create an object with that calculator. The next step is to use the calculator to actually um, calculate the distances between each of the different species. So I load the alignment into the calculator. Sorry, I should mention that um, there are different uh, different models that you can use um, for this calculator. And here I've used the identity module, um, but there are many, many different ones that you can look into. So for the distance matrix, this basically gives me the distance, all these numbers are the distances um, between the different um, genetic sequences. Um, and that will ultimately translate into how far or how long each of the branches are on my phylogenetic tree. The next step is then from the tree construction module again to this time load the tree constructor. Um, and again, save that as a object. That I'm going to actually finally build my tree. Um, so I use the constructor on my um, alignment to uh, make this beautiful tree. So I can see here that um, it has related each of the different species to each other and it's also included those distances from the distance matrix um, that will tell me, you know, tell the program how long to make each branch but I wanna make sure I save this tree so that I can come back and use it or edit it or upload it to a different um, editor in the future. Um, and so here I write the turtle tree into a new file. Um, the easiest way to create a phylogenetic tree in Python is to use matplotlib and just simply do phylo.draw. Very, very easy command and it outputs a tree. This is a small tree um, and the branches are kind of far apart, so it's actually nice to look at, but there's a lot of cases in which this just simply would be disgusting to look at. It would not actually be readable. Um, and so I wrote a short code for matplotlib to make the graph a little prettier. So you can imagine if I had a lot more branches or they were a lot closer together, um, something like this would be easier to read. You can change the font size, you can change the shape and um, size of the actual graph. Okay, um, the next thing I just wanted to point out is that you can do a um, drawing within a code. So if you are working at the command line in terminal, um, you could use this command to quickly draw out what it'll look like, um, just to make sure you're on the right track um, and things are looking good. I also just wanted to point out this convert, again, the convert command is in the alignment, the sequences, or the tree files, um, but here I just have an example of converting between a turtle, or excuse me, a phylo XML and a nexus type tree. Um, and the last thing I did, just as an example, is I had to go in and manually edit. Um, if you remember from the tree up here, we have these inner labels, um, and you could change those labels to be anything you want, but for this example, I just didn't want them in there. 
And as far as I can tell, there's no way to do this in um, Python itself, but you can um, manually just go into the Nexus file or the file XML and delete those, those words out of there. So this is sort of the final pretty tree that I have created um, using Python. So moving forward, I'm gonna just show my other two examples, which are much shorter. Um, this is a tree that was already created by Huang and Roy 2015. You can look up that paper here if you want to use that resource. Um, but I, they already had a Nexus file created for the tree they did in their publication. And so um, I just wanted to graph it to see if this um, matplotlib could handle a really, really big tree. Um, and I was able to use it. This um, tree file actually has hundreds of spe different species. It's very large. I'll just show you the full image right here. It's a very, very big tree. You can see the two main clades of the tree, or the two main clades of corals. Um, so it can handle very, very large trees as well. The final example is a shark's example. Um, and so this does start again from a sequence alignment. This is um, using the entire mitochondrial genome of these di six different shark species. Um, the sequences here are about 16,000 base pairs long. So they're really, really long. Um, and I can load this file, I've written a Python script, which I will show you, um, using the same commands that I showed you for the turtle example. But I wrote this script out and then I'm able to just simply load it into um, a terminal window. I'm gonna first change to my directory and then I can run the correct file and it should output a few graphs for me. So it makes the shark graph automatically for me. You can also see I use that command to write out the graph at the command line. And it also did um, output a alignment file for me right here. So it's pretty easy to automate this process at the command line or use it in a Jupyter notebook. So the last thing I just wanna show you is my GitHub website for this. I have all of the data and all of the images and files I've created for this whole process for the coral, sharks, and turtles examples. And then of course, a link to the web page that I showed you at the beginning. So if you're interested in phylogenetic trees, um, I hope this is a really good base introduction for you. Um, and good luck.